Hey gamers. Hey gamers. How's it going gamers? How you doing? Let's head towards Athos actually. Let's actually go where we're supposed to go for once. Instead of just dilly dallying, faffing about like we have been. Since we're pretty much out of side quests at this point. Right? That's where I'm supposed to go. Ashen Maw, yeah. Okay. Damn, this place is far. This place is fucking far. New. I wonder if there are quests to go to all of these islands, or if it's just like, take your own initiative and fucking do it. Uh, thick smoke, black as death, plumes from the peak of the, a rumbling volcano, the largest of the chain of mountains that makes up Magran's teeth. A serrated fissure gapes in the mountainside. Uh, deep and dark, but intermittently lit by a red-hot glow. The cavernous opening is too narrow for the for junk to sail through. The skiff is... The skiff sways tumultuously. Tumultuously. I cannot say that word. In the superheated water, the closer you row to the cave's cracked opening. Lava burbles down the mountainside, scorching rivers that disappear into the dark blue sea. Inside the rock face, the sound of churning magma grows louder. The air warms around you, beating sweat along your brow. Oh, that sounds uncomfortable. Oh, that sounds deeply unpleasant. This where Gon stormed through? At least the docks are still intact. No ash and the skin of the dead giant remains hot to the touch. Well that's fun. The fuck is this place? Ah, isn't this charming? What's this now? Burn remains of these prisoners wears tatters of sailor's garb. Hey, okay, so that's just like a little prison. How delightful. Oh, hey, look who it is. Something against the stones of the bridge, a giant clutches at his bashed in chest. It's a mess of sinew and black and iron bones. Uh, fiery blood flickering between his splayed fingers. Thickly rasping a breath, the warrior lifts his heated gaze to your face. Extinguished or crushed, us all, defiler. He struggles to speak. The agony of a slow death blazes through and scrawls, the scrawls on his skin, shrouding him with a veil of fire. You're a fire giant, an elemental servant of Magrans, aren't you? You are not mistaken. I am but one. 
of Margarine's elite champions, birthed from her flames, soon reunited in glory. What happened to you? Damned Reaper of Souls and God of Lies, Margarine's most foul enemy. More blood fire uh, licks from Rathun's cracked chest, slowly charring his arm. We need to get to Aethys. Servants of the Defiler God, damn you! He chokes, liquid fire trickling from his lips. Um, even be. I'm not a servant of him. In fact, I hate him. He wrecked my house and stole my soul. Uh, this windlass is far too massive and heavy for a kith to operate. At least this means they're all dead, right? Oh, buddy. This is what happens when you try to keep a guard from keeping his plans. Watch your footing, kids. Excepting if you can fly. Okay. Rockside has collapsed this section of the keep. Now this is giving me vibes of the other Dark Souls 2 DLC. Kith trespasses in the goddesses more, but how? Incense, the giant warrior hulks, her muscles twitch, red markings glowing hotly against her ashen skin. You must seek to follow in your defiler god's footsteps. You will not, for I will smite you where you stand. Bellowing, she hefts a massive sword overhead, but the second giant slams the half of his iron staff into the war warrior's hard-muscled stomach, abruptly halting her attack. Hold, Saga. I would speak to this filthy minion of the wretched god Aethys. Okay. Making a lot of assumptions here. Before you char her bones to dust. Oh, uh, I've I'm no friend of Aethys. He stole a piece of my soul and I mean to get it back. You think to confront an embodied god? Then you are either powerful beyond comprehension or as much a fool. He can't his head, broad fingers scratching at the rivets in his helmet. Yet you imply you do not serve him. The giant's grip turns white knuckled on the hilt of her sword. Her muscles strain and the metal quivers in her hand. Rakia, move! We cannot allow these intruders to live! Again, she thrusts the sword high. With a meaty shrug, with a shrug of his meaty shoulders, he steps aside. Um... Your fury should burn for Aethys, not me. Shoulders taut with tension, the warrior's eyes, the warrior eyes, the strewn corpses of his fellow Rathun at arms. They lie dried like husks, siphoned of their souls. I hope your weapons are as keen as your wit, both for your sake and my puny kith. Places a hand on the warrior's back to hold the warrior back. He studies you intently. You would face us in battle rather than flee. I like your metal. Kith who does not cower before Margren's greatest warriors. We have not yet defeated the embodied god, but that does not mean we won't. The Jotiger is readying another assault from within the jagged keep as we speak. 
He said a different thing than this. I will permit you to scamper closer to God's face if you believe you can survive. Scurry deeper into the moor, but know that my brethren may squash you. You plan to attack Aethys? First, we recover the wounded and their weapons. Drag them into the jagged keep. He nods. And then we will kill a god. Smacking the head of his staff against his chest, he bears you a garish grin. How can I reach Aethys? All who neared the intruder god were gutted until extinguished. You think your soul could last even half so long as Rathoon's? Maybe the kiffs will last longer. She snorts, but the other warrior ignores her, flat answering in her stead. Only Margwen's shrine with our jacket keep can lead you to the Defiler God. Kith, if Margren wishes you to face him, surely she will fire the way. I worry Margren plans to erupt the volcano. If you stay, you'll die. He has his meaty shoulders and a heavy shrug. Our duty is foremost to Margren. We guard the moor to its fiery end. Farewell. With the bodies, but this time gentle your grip. It can't be helped, Rakir. These fallen are brittle. They sure are. All right. Good talk. Good talk. That could have gone worse. Should we be concerned about that? Ain't the volcanoes in Margaret's teeth supposed to be inactive? I got a bad feeling this one's waking up. Yeah, this does seem kind of active. You ain't uh, leading us into certain death, are you, Captain? Not intentionally. Oh! Very well. Scallywag's ho, Cap. Ah, See a mass me too, man. <laughs> Damn, that was quick. He dashes more of the f this Rathun's armor and flash. Um, Jagged Keep or Lair of the Ancient. I bet a deer is nice and cool in his ice armor. He paused because immediately there are enemies. Kind of dumb to summon these drakes which spit fire why is that what my character defaulted to like most of the time that's a good call but here it's just silly oh this was the way to go I guess Alright, that one felt more serious. This does not sound good. Oh, I'm close to Aethys, but I can see no clear route to the Audra Pillar in the center of the Maw. Search the Rathian's Fortress, the Jack Keep, Violet Tremors, shaking the foundations of the Maw, the volcano growing increasingly more active. It's just their cook burning the meat. 
This place smells and feels like hell in the stories Uncle Angber used to tell me to make me behave as a child. A haze of soul essence sifts up the smoke of this cor uh, uh, from a corpse scored with heavy claw marks. Oddly, no blood pools beneath the body. The wounds have been cauterized. Reach for the soul. Hot to the touch, the essence wafts through your fingers, and then you're tumbling down into a feverish sensation of a soul reed. You are a great champion, a goliath amongst giants, your chest tight and with pride. And now something dark, a strange dread. Uh, it flickers inside you like the fire of a waking forge because you are too... Because you know you are too soon to be tempered as you stare down upon the distant god, the defiler your brothers and sisters died to defeat but could not, who now gluts on the Adra spy spire, striking plans against Magran. Uh, the iron chains that suspend the bridge below, beneath your feet drip with drip and sweat, weeping. The moss spans below, battered by the invader, the jagged keep now ever more apt in name. He cut a path to the spire that, and could not be stopped. He drank deeply from so many of you. The Brenthis watches beside you. She is fierce and will know what to do. She can hear Malgrand within the flames. Without further delay, she hastens you into the dragon's lair. She will call the beast, and it will ride with you into an assault. Inside the cavern, inside the cavern is dark and simmering. The Brenthus uh, rushes ahead of you, despite your barked warning. Something is wrong. The heat roils against your skin. A whisper of death, dangerous rather than comforting. The Defiler God has riled the dragon. The Brenthus raises her torque high, as if to collar the dragon. The light of it sheening her helm in the darkness. She's thundering. The time has come, Jada. Submit to Magran's will. And the walls rumble from a sudden earthquake. No, from the beast's laughter. Rest now, warrior. Your soul is safe with me. Uh, Shodi bows her head and drags her lantern over the corpse from head to foot and back up again. When she reaches the Rathun's punctured chest, his soul lifts up from the body and drifts towards the lantern. With a shudder, it settles inside the copper cage. Aloth flashes a quick, pleased glance. Oh, that's cool. Be a flogging dragon, that be. Yeah, we've killed dragons before. A creature of smoke and scales, embers and talons, looms up from the darkness. Her back and ribs gleam luridly, red as the lake of fire that laps at her feet. She hisses, the sound like rocks grating together in her throat. And though her peeled back lips form no, form no words, you understand. Who comes now? Stoke the flames of chaos further. Have I not yet feasted enough? I suppose I can make room for another. No, no. <laughs> that can't be healthy. Just realized how lucky we are to have never run across a sewer dragon. Shodi chokes on a scream. A uh, dry laugh crackles from the dragon's thick-scaled throat. Uh, the Rathun summoned you, so you attacked them? We struck a deal. Eons ago. I did with a wily Brenthis. It's true, these Rathun fed me exquisitely for so long. 
But today, they sought my wings like a firestorm to battle. My fangs like hot spears to pierce a god. I am the heart of the fire. I cannot be controlled. Not by a giant's weak will, and not by a sputtering trinket. What was the nature of the deal you struck with them? The beast grates a loud, insidious laugh. <laughs> the Rathun would pay their tributes of flesh and blood, fire and gold. And I, when called upon, would fight fiercely at their side. So you totally bailed on that. That arrogant priestess to ride me, the magma that fires the mountain. She sought to command me. So I consumed her. That was the deal you made, though. The Rathun forged their deal when I was but a hatchling. Now no one controls me. And I would never fight a god for fools. Oh, and here with me thinking this dragon be out of place in the dead fire. He rolls his eyes. Dragon snorts smoke from her snout. You are a creature most amusing. Perhaps I shall yet allow you to live. Um, I much I must reach Aethys in the depths of the Maw. You think to ride me? A great firestorm in the moor to meet a blustering god. Massive beast chuckles roll out like laughter, but acrid smoke puffs from her nostrils, underscoring her anger. If the Rathun could not tame me, why should a little wretch like you fare better? Do you know of a physical path to reach the maw or not? Slowly, she flexes her wings. They sizzle and pop, nearly steaming. I shall tell you this much, if only to keep you from my wings. Your path to Aethus lies through Margren, through her shrine within the Rathun's Keep. Igniting Margren's shrine lowers it into the moor. So that a Brenthis may worship before the Ardra Pillar. See. Magran will do anything to stop Aethys. If she erupts this volcano, you'll be destroyed along with it. Should I believe the wretched words of a trespasser in my den? Even were it so, the fire feeds me. It can cause me no harm. Believe me, dragon, I would not lie about such a grave matter. Perhaps you speak the truth, and such may come to pass. Only fools die fighting the gods. I have lived for eons, and I will live for eons longer. Me. I fly. The great heave, she slogs her body from the magma and takes to the sky. Oops. The closer you near to the dimly lit essence that smolders over the Rathun's burnt corpse, uh, the stronger you feel the soul's flickering confusion and grief. Ash and crooked fingers still clutch a flaming torque. Uh, grasping the relic tightly, even in death. Reach for the soul. Rather than falling face forward into a vision of the Rathun's final memory, her last thoughts scream through your mind in a jumble of disjointed words and disbelief. I am burning! I am burning! I am burning! And it is not in pleasure! Not for Mother Margaret! I should have listened when she said nothing! 
but I was willing to die to reach the ever flame, to sacrifice them and everything to ash, to vanquish the defiler. And I am burning, but not in the flame, not with honor and eternity, but for a moment. I am disgraced. Rip. Uh, dig deeper into her final memory. Who? Who will lay the talk before the mother to fire the way? Who is left? Who will guard the sacred spire, the mother's mind? Who will descend the shrine to the defiler's god's face? Not to these hands that are ashes sifting on a breath that is a last sigh of a wretchedly snuffed life. Not to me and mine. Now she who was blackened and befouled and forsaken by the flames, forsaken by Margaron. Try the torque from the priestess's hand. Twisting the torque free, it cracks off three of the priestess's blackened, brittle fingers. You've gained the thing. The final flicker, a last swift filing shot. Shuddering, the soul dims and disintegrates. Rest easy now, priestess. I'll harvest your soul and your torment too. Coking the soul with a low, soothing voice, Shodi jiggles her lantern over the priestess's charred corpse. There's not much left after the trauma the soul endured, but a few glimmering motes whirl around the soft light before fading into the lantern. Eloth flashes a quick, pleased glance. Look, the dragon's gone. I'm gonna steal from it. Of course I'm gonna steal from the dragon. It's gone. Dragon fucked off. Um... Buddy, is this better than what you've got? Oh... Uh, shock damage. Gains 8 health on a critical hit. That's good. That's good. Um. Is that better than what you've got? Nah, it seems like having icy damage would be beneficial here. This seems like a place where having ice damage would actually like way pay off and it's really good that I went to the ice place. And got like the ice kit. Okay. I feel like I should be able to just yell at him from here. Be like, hey ass hat. Coming to fucking get you. You piece of shit. Yeah, I see you down there. Spend your whole life thinking you're a giant. And one day that fella shows up at your fortress. That was awfully profound. Shit, can I? Yeah, you can't. Can't enchant stuff. Legendary pistol. Got an arquebus. Arquebuses are fun. 
What's the point of an arquebus if it's inaccurate? My inaccurate sniper rifle. Like, come on. The whole point of a long rifle is that it's more accurate. Peaked at spotting you, the strapping warrior slams her shield against the floor, rattling the stones beneath your feet. Scurriers in my keep! Make ready to be crushed, vermin of Aeothas! Uh, look here, I've recovered your fallen... I've recovered this from your fallen Brenthus. You felled her? And her dragon? Uh, with a deep chested growl, the warrior readies the sword to strike. No, it was the dragon who killed her, not me. She stills, red, red scrawls in her skin flickering as she grimly appraises you. A muscle ticks in her jaw. Finally, she sees her sword. Then the Bathor will decide your fate. He awaits at the back of the keep. Cool. Glad you're not murdering me. Because I'd hate to be murdered or do murder. Y'all seem cool. I don't want to kill you. It's done. Rock size collapsed the section of the keep. Ain't that just the way of things? A sacrifice to the goddess is the noblest death. Mogren will honor his soul. Sure, bud. I think I went the silly way. But at least I gained some XP picking locks. Supposing this volcano blows? What are the odds any of us but gone survives it? We should move quickly. I can see the fury burning in her eyes. When the warlord spots you, his shoulders stiffen and he reaches for the mace strapped to his back. Kith, how is it you have come to be here? Nay, it is of little matter. I'm not here to fight you. Your words hold no weight, Kith. Rathun decide their own battles. His words boom from behind his helm without falter, yet he does not strike. With raised hand, he signals his warriors to wait. Um... There's no reason for us to fight when we can be of aid to each other. He scrubs a hand over the front of his helm, apparently weighing your words. I concede to your point. For the time being. Aethus deserves death, not words. The I agree. The God has brought war to Ash and Moor in revenge against Margaret and her Athun. The Warlord regards your hotly fire drip fire sweat dripping <sighs> you're the re bleh, 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 bleh. redo the warrior regards you hotly fire sweat dripping down his neck his surrounding warriors clang their weapons against their chests or the floor clamoring for blood what is your relation to Aethus if not to act with him against Margaret? Uh, 
Uh, Aeth is still part of my soul. I need it back. Then you two have cause against Aethus, as we do. We are prepared to assault Aethus at the base of the moor. The warlord gestures to the shrine of Magran behind him. The shrine will lower us to the sacred Ardra pillar, where the embodied god now gluts himself. Let me through. I'll speak with Aethys and convince him to leave this place. Even if I believed you, I cannot do such a thing. He shakes his head. His eyes burn, fiercely intent. We guard the sacred depths of the Maw. None may freely enter. Thus the shrine lies dormant, locked without the talk of Bethacton. He shoves his shoulders back with pride. Our high priestess. The Brenthis is the Torque's rightful bearer, but she has yet to return to the keep. I found your Brenthis. She's dead. Then it is as I feared, and as I felt. Her flames have been extinguished. I do not share the Brenthis's ability to commune with Margaret, but I must believe the Goddess would will us to fight. We must make a final stand. If you assault Aethys, you'll be slaughtered. To die for Margaret is the greatest honor. We live only to protect the goddess and to serve her will. And Margaret has obliterated Aethys before, has she not? I have the tour. I heard shouts of your triumph preceding you. It would seem you are unparalleled among your kind. And mine. What became of the ancient, Jorda Fairless? Triumph will be nigh impossible without her. W uh, what makes you think something happened to her? Face beat red, Jody chokes, pounding her chest as she struggles for air. Seraphin's eyes close as he nods along. Whatever gave you people the idea that dragon would let you ride her? Warlord tilts his head and considers, considering the true meaning of your companion's reaction. Growing distrustful, he tightens th his grip on his mace. You will answer me, Kith, without trickery or lies. He glowers, impatient. The dragon has forsaken you. Fall silent, the scrawlings on his skin flaring hotly. Indeed. I feared the worst when the Brenthis failed to return with the beast. We've no choice. Despite the odds, we'll attack without either strength. He shakes his head, the motion grave. If this is to be our last stand, we must prepare ourselves, either for victory or for sacrifice. Let's Margaret forsake us for our failures. You've earned the right to fire shrine with the talk of the other flame. But we cannot join you as yet in facing the defiler. All right. Cool, we leveled up. Now we're level 16. Dang. Seems like just yesterday, level one. Beverage. Okay, um, let's go with Arcana and Diplomacy. One ability for both classes, don't mind if I do. Sounds good. Um. Ooh, that's very good. Burns away the ethereal sinew that holds the tail of the mind, body, and soul of a target enemy. Oof. Now yeah, let's go with that.
Um. Come as well, I guess. And history. Um, it's not much I'm interested in here, Shody. Like, you've already got pretty much everything good. Physics and explosives. Hmm. That sounds good. Um, powered attacks, powered attacks, powered attacks. I don't do empowered attacks. I should, but I don't. God, that looks so fucking good. That combo of the armor, the shield, the sword. Adir, you look so fucking cool. Again, literally, but that's not the way I mean. Is a damage bonus to the fire's proficient weapons? Yes, please. Why did I not take that before? Oh, nailed it. And the mouse exactly where it needed to be. Uh, athletics and survival. Uh, let's go for spell resistance. And that rip apart the enemy's mind, body, and soul thing. That seems pretty baller. Massive chains hold the weight of the shrine's conveyable platform. Alright, before you stands the shrine to Magran, goddess of flame and war, lifting your eyes, fiery motes, motes begin to streak across your vision as you stare into the imposing cast of her likeness. Uh, for the span of a single breath, everything falls eerily silent. The rathoon behind you fade away. Flames to either side of you flicker, hot flicker higher, dancing without sound. But the heat is real, licking your skin. And the metal groans as Magran's flame bends her head to you in greeting. Watcher, the time does not allow for niceties. Her words flow like lava from her lips, like the trails that burble hotly from her eyes. 
Even now, Aethys gains strength from the Spire. What progress have you to report? The Rathuner uh, the Rathuner planning a final assault against Aethys. Then they will burn to ash and return to the mud kiln from whence they came. Yeah. She leans forward, the copper of her corded arms gleaming from the blustering flame. She tugs her sword free from the plinth, and the entire shrine shudders with heat. Presently, I shall erupt this volcano, and with it, consume Aethys. I suggest you retreat if you at all value your mortal form. I need more time to reach Aethys. I can give you only the moments more it takes me to fully fire the depths of this maw. After that, I will not stay the assault. Even for you. Fare thee on, Watcher. My condolences, should you die. She inclines her head once more in a stalwart farewell. Uh, the avatar of the goddess flashes over the imposing statue before you. As the image fades, her absence leaves the co shrine cold and deathly silent. Interact with the shrine. Uh, statue of Magran towers above you, bloody battle ready. The goddess clutches both sword and shield. At the base of the statue, a rectangular iron slatted altar uh, rests between two unlit braziers. Examine the altar. The slat top of the altar has been hammered sil- has been hammered silver water smooth, except for a singular- a single circular groove notched deep into the center of the slab. Charred bits of metal, leather, and bone are piled in the interior of the circular groove. The remains of prior offerings to the goddess. Place the torque on the altar. Uh, the razors on either side of the altar flare to life. Red hot flames shooting high before settling into a steadier, softer burn within the bowls. Lava eddies beneath iron grating in the floor, heating, uh, heating the soles of your feet while the statue herself seems to wake, metal groaning, rasping as the shrine moves. You have lost the thing. Um, base the statue of a rectangular iron slatted altar rests between two blazing braziers. In the center of the altar, the torque of Bithacton burns brightly, an offering to Magran. Descend into the depths of the Ashen Maw. With the squeal of metal against metal, the entire floor drops a stomach lurching five feet. Chains clang like the toll of a bell as they catch pounding against the time-worn gears. Then the shrine begins steadily lowering it to the maw. As the shrine cranks lower into the maw, Aethys's colossal Audra carved dome, neck and shoulders slowly emerge into view. <sighs> this close, the god rises up like a mountain, larger than you even remember him having seen him. Energy vibrates from his massive body, a cacophony of mutterings and shouts from the souls whirling within it slam into you, nearly knocking you from your feet. And he wanted us all to come? Have you ever seen anything so awe-inspiring? Behold the power of my god! Yeah, it's sure fucking something, Shodi. Watcher, I wasn't sure you'd make it. But there is enough of you in me to grasp that you had a better chance than most. Some would say it's because you have a strong soul. 
Great deeds come easily to one so spiritually blessed. Or have you become great because of what has been thrust upon you, Watcher of Cadnua, Herald of Bereth, Hound of Aethys? Oh, my God. You, you, you really, I mean, I'm. This can't. Oh. Hands on his hips, surf and gr grins. I see you, Shoti. I am glad that we could meet, even if it is under quite unpleasant circumstances. This is really happening, right? Gone. Your humble priestess is before you. Please, tell me what you require of me. How do I save more lost souls than I can carry in one lifetime? Face bright red, sweat beating her brow. Shodi stumbles precariously closer to the edge. Lantern rattling, she catches herself. A mere moment before she would have toppled over. Okay, narration now. Neat. I know that you have undertaken a noble mission, but I will tell you what I told the Watcher. You need not fear for the lost souls of this world. As for you, Watcher, why is it you believe you have made it this far? Each of us simply does the best we can. My trials have made me who I am. You have done much in this life, it's true. But if it weren't for your past with Theos, with Eovara, you never would have come down this path. But you have come a great distance for answers. What would you ask of me, Watcher? I need to know why you've come back. You need to know? Or Bereth? Or the gods? After all you've done, I think every creature that lives and breathes on Aora needs to know. And it would seem even she whose presence shakes the heart of this mountain needs to know. Margren is prepared to take drastic measures to stop you. Margren fears what I will do. Just as she feared what I would do in the Deerwood. But this time, there is no power on Aora or in all of Hell to stop me. Understand that what I'm saying is neither a boast nor a challenge. It is the clearest statement of truth I can give you. Give Bereth, in the hopes of dissuading you from taking actions that may harm others. Um, says the one who's killed thousands walking from Deerwood to Deadfire? Yes. I am sacrificing lives from this generation for the benefit of those who have not yet been born. The other gods may be willing to make similar sacrifices, but they will be in vain. I am going to force gods and mortals alike to open their eyes to one another. And all the powers of hell cannot drive me from this course. It seems my sister does not like the sound of that. Can you be more specific? What are you trying to do? I want to return the gods to our original purpose and to allow mortals to worship us, or ignore us, for what we are, not what we pretend to be. Shodi gasps sharply, for once too stunned to blurt out a response. Her eyes are wild, with too much white showing, when she glances from Aethys to you. Whatever you're doing, there's gotta be a better way. When I entered Widewin, I did so with the intention of illuminating the history of Angwith. I wanted to show all the nations of the Eastern Reach the machines we had used to create ourselves. How we had hidden our true nature from mortals for millennia. But even if I had succeeded, my words would have been easy to deny. Belief creates the foundation upon which a mind's reality is built. Huh. Some minds can never let go of that foundation. They would rather hold tight to the world in their mind, than accept what they're being told. True enough, I suppose. Um... If that's so, what are you doing this time that will make any difference? I have not come to speak, to convince, to plead. 
but to break the foundations of belief itself. To extinguish the lights that maintain the illusions we have created. What does that mean? We took on the mantles of gods from legends, and in so doing, made real what was false. Crafted truth from fiction. The time has come for a new covenant between gods and mortals. One forged in the light of truth and understanding between our kind. Okay. I will leave this place and go to the lost city the Huana call Ukaizo. It is there that all souls pass through the machines of the gods. Where all souls pass into the beyond before beginning their next life. Wait, what? When I reach that place, I will find our great machines and tear them to pieces. I will smash the great wheel until the lights of hell all gutter and die. And when my work is done, I will leave this world forever. Or destruction. You're tearing the whole world apart because you can't make peace among yourselves. Adair, there will never be peace among mortals, so long as they are unwittingly manipulated by the gods. The divine enslavement that Woodaka reveres perpetuates ignorance, chaos, and violence across the world. True enough, I suppose. I only wish to destroy the darkness that surrounds the gods, that you may better see us for what we are. I guess that's one way to get a response. I'm surprised Magrin is reacting this way. I would have thought she would appreciate a trial of this magnitude, one that tests us all. Both gods and mortals alike rely on the wheel. We depend on it for the souls that give us power. Mortals depend on it for the lives of future generations. Breaking it will force all of us to face the truth. We will fail together or move forward together. Either ending is preferable to the cycle we still find ourselves in. I don't know that that's true. Don't wait! Before it's too late, you gotta take the souls I harvested for you. The priestess thrusts her light pulsing lantern outward, as if waiting for Aethys to take it from her. Hiloth hums approvingly. They are not for me to take. Shodi, you are their guardian now. You are their protector. You have taken responsibility for them, and only you can decide their fate. Once again, the gods have put you in a precarious position, Watcher. Considering all the troubles I have put you through, the least I can do is protect you from the wrath Mogren has intended for me. This doesn't make us even, you know. Perhaps I will have another opportunity to make amends. Until then, this will have to do. Brace yourself, Watcher. Guys and gals, we are literally being touched by the hand of God right now. Despite herself, Shodi squeals. Trembling, she sways on her feet as if she might faint. Seraphin strokes his beard, braided beard beneath a quiet smirk. Hey, Aethys, we're not done here. You and I, we're not finished. Don't think you can just move me aside like all the rest. Maybe you can't be stopped. But on behalf of everyone you've trampled, betrayed, and ignored, I'll be coming to see you again. Adair spits. In the surging heat, it never reaches the ground. Oof, that's hot. Perhaps we will meet again, Adair. That sounds really Until uncomfortable. Then, take care of the Watcher. Aethys's great hand floats away from the luminous Audra pillar. As it pulls back, for a brief moment you see a golden tether flash into existence between the pillar and the great titan's back. When the Audra fingers gently cradle you, there is first a sensation of warmth, but it is followed by a harsh splitting of consciousness. Your awareness vacillates erratically between the physical world and the spiritual dimension of Aethys' body. Your soul glides amid the many trapped with Aethys. As your brilliant form passes by them, they call and reach out for help. 
Below Aethys's body, the volcano erupts. Molten rock rushes over the great Audra body, but does not slow its movement. Rathun rush to higher ground, but cannot outpace the lava, which overwhelms and consumes them as it rises. Oof. Rap. Your attention returns to the heart of Aethys's body. Deep within the whirling masses of souls, you again sense your own presence. The fragment that was taken from you. This time, you reach out to it as it reaches out to you. You meet somewhere in the great mass of Audra, the rest of the souls fading at the edge of your awareness. We are together again. Are you ready to be together again? Yes, it's about time. Are you certain? Since we've parted, you've become someone else. And I have become myself. When we join, we won't be ourselves anymore. Your senses yank back to your body. Oh, the that's cool. There is light, sunlight. He has emerged from Ashen Ma, the rim of the volcano and the great keep of the Rathun collapsing behind him. The Adra is barely visible through the thick lava covering his body. And still, he moves. Mm. That's fucking cool. The ocean is gone. Water sucked away, leaving only the bare seabed glistening in an ominous silence. You summon the strength to turn your head. Through the cracks in the great god's fingers, you see a wall of water. Taller than Nekataka, taller than Aethys, as tall as the moon. It comes with the rumbling of a terrible stampede. Mm. The wave slams into Aethys. His hand closes, protecting you from the devastation. What happened Somewhere to my boat? Mind, you hear Andra screaming. This can't be good for my boat. You are back inside him. Back with yourself. Are you still the same watcher who devoured the souls at Heritage Hill? Darkness roils within the soul as it awaits your response. I am. Um. No, I've changed. I'm not that person anymore. This may be painful then. But I suppose it will be so for both of us. You feel mm. cool air. Seawater. The back of your mind pulls your attention back to your body. Aethys stands amid the now calm waves. Kraken futilely clinging to his limbs as he gingerly sets down your ship with one hand. He carefully opens his other, setting your body on the deck. As your head comes to rest, your vision rocks forward, pulled back into the Audra, back to your soul. Some of us is lost to him. Fragments and the empty spaces between them. They will always be a part of him. But we are still us. And it's time for us to go. Together. Together. The soul rushes toward you, flying into you with ferocious speed. You are thrust back through the Audra, mm -hmm. out of the palm of Aethys's hand back into your body. You can feel the sensation of your skin, the warmth of the Audra, but you are not fully in control. The other soul struggles to reach the surface of the body's consciousness, but you pull it down. Entangled, you float in a dark, boundless expanse. The more you fight each other, the closer you become, until somehow, impossibly, every piece of you is touching every piece of them. Hot. Through the distant window of your eyes, you see Aethys push slowly against your ship. Though his touch is light, it is still the touch of a god. The ship lurches, rapidly tearing across the water southward. His hand pulls away from your ship's wake, his body straightening, towering overhead. The volcanic rock, now cooled and gently steaming, sloughs from his body as he moves. 
The Audra beneath is still immaculate, unmarked. Seriously, how did my you depart, and you hear a voice in your mind as you sink deeper into the blackness of sleep? Seriously, how did my boat survive the giant wave? How? Th that's how. How? 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 Tell them what you have witnessed, Watcher. Tell them what is coming. The windows of your eyes retreat into the distance. The fragment of your soul is so close to you in the darkness that you can't tell if its thoughts are separate from your own. Aethys is going to Ukaizo? Aethys is going to Ukaizo. He's going to stop the wheel? He's going to stop the wheel. Aethys is going to Ukaizo. Aethys is going to Ukaizo. He's going to stop the wheel. The words repeat in your mind until they become an incessant, meaningless mantra. Involuntary meditation in the emptiness of your unconscious. When the words finally dissolve and become part of the darkness, you see a pinpoint of light. You no longer sense the other soul. No longer sense the person you were before Aethys touched you. You swim toward the light. Okay. As you come closer, the light becomes two blurry spots of radiance. You settle in behind your eyes and feel your lips already moving, mumbling. Around your body, you sense familiar scents and sounds, voices raised in shock and alarm. You take control of your mouth, opening it wide and drawing a great breath. All right, that sure was something. Pounding headache drags you most of the way back to your senses. Your vision blurs and an acrid taste fills your parched mouth. The details of the room slowly come into focus. The sounds of an ongoing debate, a distant echo. Are we simply going to wait? What if she never wakes up? Are those frilled collars stuffed in your ears? If the Watcher's mumblings are right, then Aethys is marching on Ukaizo. We have to move. In the brief silence, you hear Hanaz Hanzanui's Karu's boots scrape against the tile as she paces. He's seizing power from the very gods who betrayed him. Destroying the wheel to make sure they never come back. She shakes her head and chuckles with grim appreciation. It's a coup, and we have to muster the strength to stop it. The unraveling of Kohopa from Tangaloa is our greatest test from the gods, I say. We must live to deserve the world they make for us. Onikaza rests her chin on her, on her fist and considers. The assembled leaders turn their attention away from each other in a prolonged, si thoughtful silence. At last, you feel fully present and steady on your feet. The attention of the room abruptly shifts to you, filling the void with expectant whispers. My head. Good you're awake. Just when I was worried we were going to stand around all day talking. She glares briefly at the rest of the assembly. It seems you've been talking in your sleep about Aethys's plan to destroy the wheel. Our friends here are understandably concerned. He looks around awkwardly at the assembled leaders. Join our talks, I say. Rational discussion will gust away the ominous smoke rising from Ashen Maul. Onikaza gestures to you with an open palm. The dead fire is no stranger to cataclysm. We can survive by cleaving to a shared purpose. A greater good, Akira. Uh, she looks to each of the envoys in turn. For what else did the gods place us here? We who have ships and resources enough to make a difference. Kestel glances around the room at the gathered parties, his, brow, his brows climbing. What we need is brass. Rawatai has ships and cannons aplenty, but the only way I'm sending them is if... 
She breaks off at the boom of the, of the door slamming. Commotion echoes from the entrance hall. As everyone turns towards the noise, her hand strays to her gun. Sound of approaching footsteps grows in volume as a courier scrambles into the throne room, panting and glistening with sweat. His mouth opens and closes like a fish gasping desperately for breath. Ships have formed the blockade around Queen's birth. Their commander demands parley with Serpent's crown. What? B -b -b but what about our ships? I must get a message through to the captains. For what do our enemies paint a target on their hull? This is a stirring bid for my attention. Onikaza narrows her gaze past the open door. Send word to my water shapers to drain the sea around the flagship. I would parley on better terms than this. Onikaza begins to rise, but the courier speaks up ahead of her. My queen! They fly the colors of pirates! The principi are... Well, what have we here? A confident voice booms from the open door. Hey, what are you doing here? The motley sailors who don't hold the Huana Gars at bay with drawn weapons take, take in some of the more opulent decorations with avid interest. One pirate separates from the fold, sauntering boldly forward. Forgive me, Loveson, but it looks like you're having a party. A rather fine one to which you didn't invite me. She winks, sullying it glinting in the light as she cocks her pistol high above her head. You painted vagrants are a plague on my tribes. Why should I not hang you from the walls of my garden? Onikaza grips the hand rests of her throne as if ready to vault up and attack. You should be asking yourself how they got in here in the first place. She glowers in the direction of the throne. Oh, I do love when they squabble. But I'm here for neither pleasantries nor entertainment. We've bigger fish to fry. Or should I say gods? A determined looking guard inches closer to Aldous from the edge of the court. Without looking, the Principe Captain swivels her pistol to aim straight at his chest. Now everyone just calm down. I promise we won't fire on you at this time. Unless firstly provoked. That is... Hmm. Until whence we've safely absconded from the city back to the high seas. She grins magnanimously. Then all bets are off again. I? Uh, yes. Well, if you have a point, pirate, I suggest you reach it quickly. We're supposed to take a bunch of pirates at their word? She crosses her arms, the wooden hand groaning. Right you are. However... The narrow-eyed look she settles in the room is a, more than a little bloodthirsty. I'm here because I've got questions, ones that can't wait. And the Loveson Watcher's the only one likely to answer them nicely. Um... If we want to reach Ukaizo, we'll need every ship at our disposal. Ukaizo? What's the lost city of gold got to do with the god on a rampage? She uses the barrel of her gun. Using the barrel of her gun, she tips her hat back curiously. Aethys is going there to break the cycle of reincarnation. Well, fuck, if that doesn't put things into perspective. But what's that even mean in the long run? Folks who die won't be coming back again. Um... Maybe not at first, but eventually Aeora will be starved of life. This is all dark mm. and foreboding sounding. But what's it mean for my soul? I mean, I like the idea of pirating throughout the great beyond as much as the next gal. But if, say, I got no awareness after I die, does it even matter what happens? Ach, of course you have no interest past that of your eyes and your stomach. Lol. Let us speak now of what can be done. Must be done. Watcher, you know best of all of us what our options are. Uh, every cannon in Aora couldn't slow him down. But, Watcher, you must have some solution. Some insight, at least. A weakness, or... We have to act quickly. Defending Okaizo is mm -hmm. the highest priority. 
A pensive focused look sharpens the lines of her face. She scratches her cheek and the fingers of her wooden hand. Our ships are fast and well equipped. We could sail to the edge of Andra's mortar. See if Aethys' passage opens a way through the storms. She narrows her eyes, watching the others. Of course, finding Ukaizo once we're through is another matter. Hmm. Um. I can sense Aethys through in Andra's mortar. My soul comes out from inside him. That's so. You just might be able to save us. She scratches her chin, an eager glimmer in her eyes. We speak of collectively sailing for Andra's mortar, but this crown will not support any plan mm. that involves a single outsider ship landing on the shores of Ukaizo. A hush falls across the room as Onikaza makes her pro proclamation. It is for this moment that the gods test me. Anyone who seeks to cross Andra's mortar will learn that the gates of Ukaizo are the end of compromise with the Juana. Um, can everyone agree to an armistice while we work through this crisis? I don't mean to let Aethys end us while we bicker. But the fate of Ukaizo is not exclusively a Juana concern. I think I'm getting the gist of it now. She rubs the barrel of her gun under her jaw thoughtfully. Then she crooks you a cunning grin. While these witless princocks go at each other's throats, we Principi will cut through the storms and plunder the City of Gold. Whatever Aeothus is seeking in those ruins, we'll find it. And then we'll sell it to the highest bidder. That... Or me and mine will have front row seats to the end of the world. If the Juana cannot take back our beginning, then our end fast approaches. The gods will judge us by our devotion to Ukaizo. Are you going to guard it as closely as you've guarded your palace today? She shoots a meaningful stare at the pirates. Ukaizo was yours once, and you lost it. Mm. Meanwhile, the storms that cover Andra's mortar plague Rauatai too. We will help the Watchers stop Aethys, but we will not leave our country's future in soft hands. We hope the Watcher agrees. She nods to you. Watcher, there are two kinds of people in the Deadfire. Those who have called it home since time immemorial, and opportunists. <laughs> Onikaza glares at the assembled dignitaries. With Ukaizo under our control, the Huana would restore order as it has not been seen since the days of our ancestors. Mm. She nods slowly, holding your gaze all the while. Ak, order. And the only question is whether it will be the order of ignorance and tradition, or else of conquest. The secrets to be found in Ukaizo could elevate us all beyond the telling. I will not relinquish that dream so easily. With that, Castell turns to stride away, his shoulders set in a rigid line. Without so much as a final farewell, Aldis tips her head to the armed crew, and the pirates withdraw as swiftly as they arrive. Watcher, I say the time to play at freelancing is at an end. Any of us could get you to Ukaizo, but only one of us will stand by your side. Studying you carefully, Onikaza nods and gestures for her attendants to clear the room. Let's well, shit. Watcher, while we have the chance. So you're saying you're literally a pirate of the mind? You sail in and steal people's thoughts? Behold, lass. I'm the original psychic piratical. Not hardly. Even I've heard about Malnage. She's a cipher like you, ain't she? Only older. Ugh. Had to dredge up my cruel rival. You should know her arsehole itches when mention be made of her. What a nasty hex. Tell me you weren't the one that put it on her. Darn, I hope that doesn't make her itch. <gasps> Hell, or that. Now I'm just making it worse. I best shut my mouth before I cause more damage. <laughs> I like your style, kid. Lol. I see it is not every day that a ship pulls into port for Margarine's teeth. You are not too singed, I hope. Aruhi looks you up and down, clearly impressed. 
Our enemies scramble for Kaizo, dropping all pretense of strategy in their panic and haste. Sighing, Aruhi gestures for you to speak freely. I'll talk about the food shortage in the gullet. Again, you bring this up. Speak on, I say. Haru need her queen, won't she step in? Akira, for what would she sit on her hands if she had the time? Or the resources? The tribes beyond our city look uh. to her as well, and the problems are as numerous as fish in the sea. If you have more to say. Whatever. Um. So. Okay, so I need to find oh, Captain. Oh, yourself, Seraphin. Truth be told, I've not felt so cozy in a crew since my tour on the Sorcerer. With Romoro and the lot. Good times and enough, that. You're a valuable member of my crew. By way of expressing my gratitude, mm. I've a tribute to be presenting. It's meant to be worn by a great captain. Mm. I think you rightly qualify. Is it a hat? I can't wear hats. And I think you'll look right spiff in it, too. Where'd you get this? Romaro gifted it to me when I took leave of the sorcerer. He had this notion I'd make captain myself someday. Does this mean you don't want to be a captain? Mayhaps I coveted a captain's quarters when I were a wee swabby. But serving with Ferrante, uh, with yourself, seeing what leading mm. the crew takes. Well, I reckon it's like Marion. It just ain't for me. Thank you for the gift. Pleasure be entirely mine, Cap. May it serve you at least half as well as I. <sighs> Shame I can't wear hats. Okay, so... Got good rep with my best faction is the pirates. But I don't like the pirates is the thing. I don't want to give Ukaizo to the pirates. <sighs> I'm leaning towards the Huana. Because it is by rights their place, and I don't want to support colonizers A or colonizers B. Interesting. Um, okay, so I guess I guess let's go to the queen and side with her. I 
like, again. It really sucks that you have to do this. That you have to pick sides. Because, like, man. It's literal fate of the world shit. So the crown granted your master an audience. How did it go? Akira. I wonder how far I am into this. Like how much more is there? Every corner of the dead fire babbles of the devastation from Magrin's teeth. Queen wears a furrow down her brow and looks fixed in place. And Aethys marches on Ukaizo while I juggle armloads of enemies. Hmm. This is no coincidence. Nagati is testing me, I say. Hmm. Do you think you're equal to the challenge? If I am not, hmm. then Nagati will close her jaws around me. I will live to taunt her and keep my people safe. If you have spent any time in the dead fire at all, the myth of lost to Kaizo can be no mystery. Chart on Motario Kozi uh, seemed to treat Okaizo like the center of the world. Akira, and with good reason. They say the beaches of Ukaizo spanned impossible horizons, and its towers graced the light of distant stars. She blinks up at the sky, her gaze tracing an unseen shape. At night, I even... Ah, but it is nothing. She waves the matter aside as if brushing him off. You've been dreaming of Okaizo, Highness. Akira, since I was a child. Onikaza slowly exhales through her nose. Do your dreams ever wake you in the dark of the night? To find yourself trembling and tangled in blankets soaked with sweat? Do you ever open your eyes, feeling both fearful and sick? Blinking, Onikaza folds her arms and looks from Shodi back to you. Curious company you keep, Watcher. No? <laughs> Just me then? When I close my eyes, I stand before the gates of Ukaizo. There are always three. For what would there be three gates? She furrows her brow and shakes her head, clearly a question she has asked herself many times before. I do not say I am meant to go, but the gods, they want the Juana to return and reclaim what we lost. Ah, uh, the gods certainly aren't above picking favorites. For what do the tribes not fight each other? For what are we united if not to take back lost Ukaizo? Onikaza shows her teeth. It's difficult to tell if she's smiling or grimacing. Under Wodika's gaze do we keep order. Atop Nagati's seas are we tested. From Akuhu's bowels do we carry wisdom back to the tribe. You sure that's wisdom? Revelation comes from unlikely places, soldier. I say you should have learned this on the battlefield. Onikaza nods towards the dare. The gods want this for us, I say. We have come this far to restore order and earn back our empire. So, Watcher, do we unite and sail for Ukaizo? Guess this is where I have to fucking. I'd be honored to sail under your banner and search for Ukaizo. Ikira, to Ukaizo and the prosperity of the Juana. Onikaza inclines her head and raises her fingers to her brow. The Juana are strong, but our foes are stronger, richer, more relentless still. I say that the gods have delivered us an advantage we sorely need. 
It is beyond time that we rid ourselves of the trading companies. She closes her eyes and draws in breath, grateful to say the words aloud. The Wahaki stand with us. With their howling warriors on our side, I say no foreign fighter will hold their ground. We have studied the chart of our ancestors, seen the dead fire as they saw it. Matari Okozi will lead us home again. It used to be that the strength of the trading companies grew by the lengths of Enil's belly. Now they grow fast and unchecked, feeding off all they find. It is my responsibility to defang the serpent before it bites down on my neck, and I need all the help I can get. My guards apprehended a Valian agent prowling in the shadows of the brass citadel. The queen thumbs her chin and studies your reaction. By his own admission, he was there to blow up Rawatai's black powder stores. That would be an act of war. Akira, incredible, is it not? And legally sound as far as the Republics are concerned. You must pick up where the Valian agent left off. She holds your gaze, letting silence carry the weight of her words. You getting arrested? So it's to be sabotage then. Aruihi wants a more direct confrontation. One day this will be practical. For now, we must take what opportunities the gods give. After the powder house is destroyed, our prisoner's testimony will point the way to Director Castor. You must not fail me. Her thoughts hit you with drum-like percussion. You will have to infiltrate the powder stores east of the brass citadel docks. I leave it to you to live by the sword or walk by the shadows. Here, the agent's explosive. She passes you an explosive device and motions for you to speak freely. Um, a bold move, Highness. Count me in. For Ingati, I say you must be a tricksome fish. For Wodica, I say order must be restored. The gods will thank you, but not half as much as the Hoana. Okay, I thought we'd just be sailing to the place, but... Slides east of Brass Citadel's dock. Thought we'd just be sailing there, not this. I mean, this is fine, I guess. The burn book grows warm in your pack. Uh, that display at the Kahanga Palace was shameful to witness. Nothing less than proof of why mortals require capable ruleship and a strong hand. When I walk amongst them again, chaos of that sort won't be tolerated. Authority and temperament are non-negotiable. Why was that not voiced? Onikaza wasn't exactly in a mood to compromise. She chose a compl complicated hour to show her enemies her teeth, but it might have been her only remaining chance. My siblings took a valiant swing at Aethys, 
but it seems our intervention will have to wait until we've had enough time to gather our strength. What of you, Watcher? Your bearing is set, and Ukaizo looms on the horizon. After everything you've seen, do you believe mortals are equipped to take control of their destiny, or do they need a firmer hand? Firm hand crushed my castle. I could have done without that. Your heart is thick with vengeance. Even in defiance do you serve me. Find Aethys, follow him to Ukaizo, and let my justice fill your sails. You desire answers. Look no further. I have several. Close the book. Wodica nods stiffly. You feel her presence drift as a breeze, rustling as it goes. But there's still out there. Will no one help me? Nope. Perhaps in a day or two. Prince Aruihi enjoys wild tales. Brass Citadel. I'm sorry, but this area is strictly off limits. The young guard draws himself to full height, crossing his arms. What is this place? Private property of the Royal Deadfire Company, that's what. She eyes you early. Can I just look around inside? Sorry, my orders come from the Hazanui herself. Come on, I can't get into that much trouble, not when this place is so well guarded. All it would take is one stray flame, one errant spark. He catches himself and stops, shaking his head. No. I'm sorry, but you really don't understand. Okay. Um. Okay, um... I still can't let you through. My hands are feeling better. It's my pride that's still sore. She glares at her burned hands. Still looking for an experienced cannoneer? Will you join my crew now? She looks you up and down, considering your offer. Don't take this the wrong way, but I only crew with ca I'm sure <sighs> you're capable. Let's talk again. How have I not made a name for myself yet? Like, what do I have to fucking do?
The Ranganui leads us, but he represents all of Rao Tai. Mighty wind then must he put his name on everything? Christ, the shores of Rao Tai. Till our five ships pour us out to dead fire once again. Shell open to me. Wait, seriously? Shit. What do I do? How do I get in? Damn, this guy's strong. Crazy how that happened. He just died. Bombs here already. Stop right there. The powder house is closed except to officers of the Royal Deadfire Company. She looks you up and down, facts and suspicious. What are you doing here? No one stands in my way. Can I not just like throw a fucking throw the fucking bomb and bounce? Like, I feel bad for the way I'm doing this. But this game doesn't exactly do sneaking well. And I'm too stupid to have, like, formulated a better plan. Wait, what? I'm very confused about the presence of a luminous Audra pillar here. This offer radiates the same energy you felt on other pillars. God, they just get exploded.
that looks deep and wide enough that you could bury the explosive in the gunpowder and no one would notice. Place the explosive. Place the device in the vat and activate it before covering with a few handfuls of gunpowder. It's well hidden, but you can faintly hear it ticking down. Okay, is it actually ticking down? bothering you to sneak. Oh, that looks bad. Place doesn't seem to have been severely exploded like the plan was. Did I plant it wrong? Did I do a bad job? I feel like I did a bad job. I thought planting a bomb in a Big pot full of gunpowder. Oh, there we go. You thought about changing the color of your fur? Mark berries will stain your skin for weeks. That that that, that done did it. The perfect crime. What do you want, Wodica? I had lingering hope that brute force and black powder would bring the dead fire to heal and compel mortals to work together. You've dashed those hopes efficiently. Gravitized powder house is destroyed, and as usual, I am proven correct. Compromise between mortals is impossible. Cannons don't start conversations, they only end them. How very astute. The Royal Dead Fire Company is a ruthless bunch, but they adhere to maritime law. Their example could have imposed order on the lawless frontier. Had Aethys never inflicted such disorder on a region, we might have one day witnessed a peaceful dead fire. Think on you that. Answers. Look no further. I want to know I more about Akaizo. Oh, why is only half of this voice? At its brightest hour, Akaizo was the seat of an empire that dominated the continent. The Huana kings and queens might have expanded their control even further, but we put a stop to that. The Apotheosis Project needed two resources of uncompromising importance. Luminous Adra and a multitude of souls. Kaizo had both. So your rusty godhood actually set back a society's development. Within the dead fire, yes, it was a calculated decision. The Juana Empire didn't conform to our idea of societal perfection, and neither did its trajectory. They came close, but some unfavorable habits were woven into the fabric of their culture. If the Juana wanted to prove us wrong, they were welcome to rise from the ashes of their past and embrace a future of our design. It's on Ukaizo now. The city stands as a memorial to a different age.
Richard's vacant buildings and flooded streets are a crown supporting but one jewel, the mechanism of reincarnation. Hokaizo is a city, a graveyard, a memory, and a machine. Later. Monica nods stiffly. You feel her presence drift as a breeze, rustling as it goes. Why can't I go through that door? Fine, I'll go through the lower door. See what I care about doors. Oh. Throne room echoes with nervous mutterings. A few heads turn in response to your entrance, but most of the attention is fixed on the tense assemblage before the throne, where anxious-looking Valiant stands flanked by guards. Ack. A thousand swallows he offered me. I should have charged ten times that. The young man crosses his arms and tips his head toward at Director Castol, then glances between the faces of the assembled leaders. Payment for igniting Rawatai's stockpile of black powder. Do we have that correct, Andakio? Ak, it is so, Highness. Swallowing, the young man nods. Onikaza slowly turns to Director Castol, her expression unreadable. What's going on here? You arrive in good time, I say. After one confession and before another still to come. Director, you stand between Wodika's justice and Tangaloa's open mouth. Has the time come to amend your statement? She raises her brow and waits patiently. With respect, your highness, these charges are absurd. If that man is, is being paid, it is not from my pocket. You expect us to believe that? This reeks of gutless, valiant subterfuge. The Hanzanui leans forward, staring daggers at Castol. One angry vein bulges in her jaw. Peace, Hanzanui. I invited the Watcher here as a witness, and I dare anyone to find a more credible source. She sweeps the room and her gaze nods in your direction. Watcher, please state your name for the Kahanga Court. Absentia, your highness. Did you witness the explosion at the Brass Citadel? Naturally, since I was following your orders to blow it up. Witness it, Highness, I let the fuse myself. <laughs> I did, Your Highness. Akira, then it is as I told our guests before. She passed the Hans Nui and the director knowing Lux. Then let's get on with it. I want to know what the Watcher saw. This... this is madness. Queen Onakaza, I would never do anything to threaten the peace between our people. Worry not, Hazanui. Under this roof... Facts are the coin of the realm. Tell us what you saw, Watcher. Um. <sighs> I hate that I have to lie. I don't like lying. 
I do like soda beverages though. So I'm Dakio in Director Castell's office. I followed him to the Brass Citadel, but was too late to stop him. What? No, that, that, that's, that's not... This is some manner of jest. Watch her. Tell her. Castell stares at you in stunned horror. I knew it. Release this snake to me, Queen. I want to see Rawatayan justice. Done. She pins the queen with a furious, expectant glare. That will be enough, Hazanui. Onikaza raises a consolatory hand. This was an attack on my city, and it falls to the Huana to judge the sentence. She presses her back against the throne and tells her chin up. No! You cannot do this! The Songretta, the, the, the Republics will... Considering the disgraces on your head, I say not even the Republics will bother to defend you. Onikaza's lips part in a satisfied smile. You are to be stripped of rank and sent to the gullet for your remaining years. May the bowels of Tangaloa scour the taint of guilt from your soul. Onikaza makes a dismissive wave and her attendants move in moves to close in. You, you, you cannot be, be serious. An ugly business, I say, but it is done. Onikasa crosses her arms and sighs, but you detect the ghost of a satisfied smile rising to her lips. Done? I've still got dead to bury and a district to rebuild. This is just the beginning for me. She shoots the queen a glare that is almost a warning. You are entitled to some recompense, Hazanui. The director's holdings rightfully belong to you. She holds her palm. As, she opens her palm in a sweeping gesture. Hmm. That'll certainly get me started. Then the matter is resolved. Uh, as Onikaza prepares to rise. The bustle of courtiers and mutter their mutterings return to a normal volume. Justice well executed, your highness. Pausing, Onikaza favors you with a nod. After so much struggle, it was a moment's work to cripple a nation. Onikaza inclines her head in a modest bow. Uh, it's an honor to serve, Highness. And well-mannered. Akira, we are nicely paired in these dark times. Join me in the garden. I would speak of our future in detail. She makes a welcoming gesture from the throne room. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, 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 zoom. The Valian Serpent has lost its head. The Rawatayan Shark its teeth. We have made it too costly for either of them to tarry in the dead fire. Yep. I never once doubted you'd do it. Ain't nothing can stop my watcher on the warpath. Um, 
Aloth massages temporal, shaking his head. The trials ahead will make this seem the scattering of toy soldiers. But in the eyes of history, your work will be the death knell of their incursion. We are united in the search through Kaizo. You will go with the full support of the crown after Aethus and the homeland of the Huana. When my people know their past, their future will soon follow. The queen grins fiercely and favors you with a nod. Are we ready for the final push to Okaizo? With every high tide, I ask Nagati if we are ready. She always leaves me to answer for myself. Onikaza's lips part in a smile. Ukaizo looms on the horizon, bringing the past with the future. Together, we will show the Juana how to cross it. Haha, <laughs> she said the wrong word. It's bridging the past, not bringing the past. I have always known that Ukaizo was no myth. She balls her fists in her lap, squeezing tightly. Just as I knew that one of our people would lead us back. Take the helm of your ship. Captain, my fleet will follow and water shapers will clear the way through Andra's mortar. And the enemy's fleet, if it comes to that. Onikaza narrows her, her, uh, narrows her eyes on the horizon and nods to herself. May Amira's feather grant you favorable wind, and may Tangaloa open its jaws to our enemies. Uh, she opens her heart. She covers her heart with one hand and touches her forehead with the other. Level up! Um, everyone gets vampirism. Ooh, or do I want a bigger, better ogre? Dang, one dank spore doesn't seem very good for being a fucking level six thing. Big ogre. Dank spore. Vampirism. Nah, I'm not gonna do vampirism. Cool as it is. Cause I never change my chance up even though I sh absolutely should. Let's go with the dank spore. Um Rod. It's important to know how to handle a rod if you know what I mean. Athletics, because we ran away, and religion, because she met her god. Let's go with those two. since those are gods that she's directly interacted with. Mm -hmm. Fucking blunderbuss, I guess. Sure, why not? Hey, Loth, you learn about explosions, because you used one. Or I guess we used one. And metaphysics, because you learned about a guy who's going to destroy the wheel. Cloak of Death? 
Damn. Uh, you learn about fucking rifles. Explosives and streetwise. Um, that's good. That's good. Um, last but not least, third mechanics and off um Okay. So how's my... Valian is still at one? I imagined they would be mad at me. Weird. Um, One sec. Okay. So let's sail to Kaizo, something that's definitely going to be uneventful.
The water moves in fast motion too. I never noticed that. Leave by sea. We've done enough damage here. For now. The steward would like to speak to you. Interesting. I simply glares at you. Yeah, I can't imagine she's very pleased with me. But, um... A moment of your time, Watcher, if you will. Uh, the steward of Cadenua's voice rises softly and evenly from the, her cracked bust. Yes, steward? Some of the hands discovered an unusual crate in the ship's hold. How did a crate get onto my ship unnoticed? Unfortunately, the ship lacks the defensive fortifications of Cadenua. A crate could have been slipped aboard at any of our ports of call, assuming it wasn't placed among our goods as we took on supplies. What kind of crate? It is roughly a yard to a side and labelled beans. The hands who noticed it were tasked by the cook to bring up ingredients for the evening stew. No beans in the crate then. Wave of affirmation rolls from the steward, the spiritual equivalent of a nod. Thank you, Stuart. I'll go see what it is. The hand left the crate in the hold, if you wish to examine it. I do. Sense of food, salt, spices, and drink mixed with the stale odor of old grass and the musty stink of rats and the ever-present fragrance of the sea. Junk rocks gently. I should at least name it The Junk. And you hear faint whispers, like the quiet brushing of the wind against the sails. Not far, uh, not far and you found the crate in question. It's size split by crowbars. Dry grass used as packing materials spilled across the floor. Within stands an intricately crafted chest of some dark tropical wood. Polished visage peers up at you, a triumvirate of wild animal faces carved in the swirling Juana style. Very cool. Uh, the front of the chest bears an iron latch fixed to a complex iron mechanism that runs uh, to the top four corners of the chest. You see no bolts or keyholes. Examine the latch. Clever mechanism ensures that the box remains tightly sealed. There's no lock and no trap. You should be able to open it safely. Examine the carvings. Three animals seem to be a spider, a stagler, and a boar. You don't know if they have any greater significance. Womp womp. Shodi's nose wrinkles at the image. I reckon this might be the Huana hunting god, like Galloween, but not exactly. Open the chest. Turn the latch to the right and a series of metal arms shift with it. Clasp opens. The top of the chest comes free. You easily lift the lid. Laying within, cradled by dry grass, is an Omoan head. The mottled flesh of its neck raggedly cut free from the rest of its body, wherever that might be. Shodi peers down at the grim cargo. Can't say I was expecting a head, not even a little. 
Want me to fetch my lantern? As you peer down at the head, you feel a strange prickling sensation along your skin. Solar energy rises from the cape, crate, throbbing in the air in time with your with the beating of your heart. It begins to take shape before you. You can see me. It's really you then, the captain of the Defiance. Uh it's junk, but yes. Oh, this is fantastic! How satisfying it is to know one did not give one's life in vain. I come from the island of Kazuwari, and we need your aid. What kind of aid do you need? Kazuwari is an island where the most skillful hunters, the most hardened explorers, the deadliest warriors, all gather to earn Tuamowai's favor. But Humaire, the island's caretaker, says the essence that sustains the island has sickened. Curdled, she called it. The animals, the trees, they all churn with anger and fear. Who is... Tuamowai? The faces of the hunt. That which hunts, kills, and endures, respectively. Some believe them to be the tripartite aspects of Galloway. Not that I would know, I've never asked them. We need a watcher. No one else can talk to souls, Humaire said, and souls are our problem. You're a watcher, right? The watcher, the one who died and lived again, who speaks to the gods. That's the watcher we need. You caught me. I knew it! I knew Humaire wouldn't have lied! You will help, won't you? I'll help if I can. What do you need me to do? Oh, that's fantastic! Thank you! Speak to Humaire at Kazuari, Watcher. She'll be able to better explain the situation than I am. Speak to Humaire. Gotcha. Kazuari's a huge island west of Hasango. It's pretty hard to miss, what with the high cliffs and waterfalls. There's one thing you should know. The faces of the hunt jealously control who enters and leaves the island. Oh goody. But there's a waterfall on the southern side of the island that will allow you to sneak in, so long as you're circumspect. I guess you should also know. The island's residents might not take too kindly to your presence if you're found. They're, um, a prickly bunch. But I'm sure that won't be a problem for you. I'll help however I can. Once we've arrived, I can help you find your way into the heart of the island. You know, if you want me to, I wouldn't want to presume. In the meantime, I'll be here. Well, behind you, really, with the rest of the spirits following you around. Okay. Weird. I guess let's go there. Actually, I'm very sleepy and not particularly in a great mood, so. I think actually I'm gonna just call it here. Um so thank you for watching y'all. I love you very much. I'll see you next time. Remember, Black Lives Matter, defund the police. Bye bye!